I'm in Booth Bay Harbor, Maine, named so by the sailors who thought it was snug as a booth. It sits right on the ocean, so there's all the water activities like sailing, kayaking, and whale watching, but right next door are the woods. So there's camping, hiking, mountain biking, and then there's always my favorite, walking, which I can do anywhere. So I am walking to my next vacation home because, as the comedian Stephen Wright says, anything is walking distance if you've got the time. I'm walking towards Ben and Luann Russell's vacation home in Southport, Maine. And the Maine coastline is so distinctive with the majestic pines that go right into the ocean, the rocky coast, that if you blindfolded me and told me you were gonna drop me off anywhere in the world and you dropped me off here, I'd take off my blindfold, I'd look and say, Maine. The best way to experience Maine is on a day like today. It's slightly foggy, they're predicting it's gonna storm, but I got a good thick book, and I'm gonna make a good thick chowder, and I'm gonna be all right. And what better way to take all this in than staying in a vacation home? That's a lighthouse. Ah, a note for moi. Samantha, we're so sorry, but we won't be able to join you. Oh, please make yourself at home and don't mind the go ghost. <gasps> I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's okay here. This is adorable. It really is cute. Ben and Luann bought this in 1991. They're all the way down in Alabama. That's where they live, where Ben has a timber and real estate business. But he came up here on a business trip and he fell in love with the area and bought the lighthouse. And a really interesting point is this, this is the only actively run, privately owned lighthouse in Maine. When Ben was interested in turning this place into a vacation home, he had to convince his wife, Luann. See, Luann was used to vacationing in the Bahamas. And her vision of living in Maine was a log cabin with no plumbing. But when he brought her up to this area, and after three years of heavy restoration, she has fallen in love with this place more so than, as Ben says, he does. She spends about three months out here just looking at the waves, the boats going by, the osprey nest, just taken in Maine. Actually, I'm gonna go give Luann a call and ask her about this ghost, because I'm not scared, you know, I, I don't scare easily, but I, I would like to, um, you know, I just, I just wanna see who I might meet while I'm in this home, <laughs> but I'm not scared. Samantha. Yeah, yeah, I made it in great. Thank you very much. I'm so disappointed that you're not here, though. It's okay that I'm here? Great. I appreciate that. Listen, <laughs> I gotta ask you a question about the ghost. There's a ghost here. I didn't know that. Oh, uh-huh. Really? It's a woman, uh-huh. Back in 1939, uh-huh. She drowned herself right outside on this ocean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> she's friendly. <laughs> well, thank you very much for allowing me to stay in your vacation home. I really appreciate that. Okay. Bye-bye. You too. Here is a list of all the light keepers since the beginning of this lighthouse. December 1829, Captain John Upham. 1859, Ephraim Pinkham. Great name. 1933, light discontinued. That's a strange name. Cool. What's, this is a beacon light from the English Channel circa 1930. You know, I would have said 1931, but what do I know? Making my way up the stairs and ooh, lots of things here. This is a housekeeper's nightmare. A lot of things to dust under, pick up, they fall off, they drop on people's heads. Oh. The upstairs hallway has a lot of funky angles to it. It's not just a straight line. It's kind of like being in a fun house where you don't know which like way to go. All the rooms here are labeled. Uh, this is the tower room. This is the Seguin suite. And you can tell it's a suite because where else would you have this amazing view? Hello! This home sits out on a point, so it is just surrounded by the sounds of the ocean. Just want to sit back and listen.
Do you hear that? Here, let me turn it up. This is the tower room, which is another guest room in the lighthouse. And Ben and Luann have these eye masks everywhere. These are great, great for afternoon naps. Obviously, they take their afternoon nap here seriously, which is an essential in any good vacation home. <sighs> what was that? Okay, take nap later. Run downstairs now. This is Ben's office when he's vacationing at his lighthouse. And when I was a little girl, I used to love to go to my dad's office and play pretend. Save our ship! Save our ship! Climbing these rocks really makes you feel like you're a kid again. Really brings back that whole sense of discovery, looking for things. I found this piece of driftwood. I think I'm gonna carve it into a canoe tonight. Maybe not, I don't know. Right now I'm looking through a tidal pool. See if I can find anything teeming with life. Clams for my clam chowder, possibly. This is the bell tower. But don't quote me on that because I really don't know. The Russells keep cots out here for the children that come to visit. It's a really great place to be a kid. And wow, that fog is really thick. It's like thick as clam chowder. A recipe for clam chowder. How perfect. Three dozen clams in the shell. Three cups of clam broth. Four slices of bacon. Four tablespoons butter. Four cups milk. Salt and pepper to taste. Two tablespoons flour. Two medium onions. And two and a half cups diced raw potatoes. Scrub clams clean with hard brush. It's really too bad that Ben and Luann can't be here. They are wonderful people. In Alabama, where they live, they have a charity called Children's Harbor, which is a place where children with cancer and other terminal diseases can go. And Ben built the building to look like a lighthouse. Chowder. Thick, creamy chowder. Oh, I need a drink. Talking about Ben and Luann, I put the bowl down, I went to have a sip. Got my drink. Luann said she was going to put this out for me. This is the pea coat and hat of the last light keeper here before the Coast Guard took it over and automated it. I'm just going to put this on for full experience here. Now, this lighthouse was built in 1829, and it stands on the mouth of the Sheepscot River. Why do I feel like a stripper in this thing? <laughs> I'm losing the hat. to get me one of these. In the late 1800s, there was a shipwreck about a half a mile out from this point. And the next day, the cargo started to wash up on the rocky shore below. One of those pieces, there was a trunk. And in that trunk, there was a baby, perfectly safe, wrapped up in down pillows with a note that said, we place our daughter in God's hands. The innkeeper, and his wife found that baby and adopted it as their own. I'm that baby.
there's no better way to experience Maine than in a lighthouse. But this is a precious and rare one because Ben and Luann don't rent this place out. They keep it for family and friends to come up, have some lobster, and go antiquing. And now, with a thunderstorm as my background and a little help from a lady ghost, sweetie, could you hit the lights? Thank you. It's time to tell a story. The time was shortly after the Civil War. A blinding snowstorm whipped up one late afternoon in March. From this lighthouse, the lighthouse keeper could see with his own eyes a schooner and her crew fetched up on all sides on a rock cliff. The innkeeper and his wife couldn't launch their dory because the surf was too fierce. They watched helplessly as the doomed crewmen climbed up the rigging of their sinking ship. Through fleeting glimpses of driving snow, they saw the most horrific scene yet. The showering spray and sub-zero winds had frozen each crew member hard to the rat lines in a clear, solid coat of ice. Then a wave came and washed away all traces of humanity. It's pretty cool to have a vacation home as a lighthouse. 